So, who better to use in an experiment So, who better to use an experiment? That's not right. Who better to use an experiment? One of the alarming statistics that has risen its ugly head up in this country is obesity. For example, So, who better to use in this experiment as somebody who basically contributes to the data of being overweight? Me. If I would have given the kids this project and said, look, I want you to go to a grocery store, and I want you to put me on a 2,000 calorie diet, and I want you from the grocery store to track 15 different nutrients, the results of that experiment would have never gotten out of Colonesco because people would have said, well, duh. If you eat 2,000 calories, and if you go ahead and watch what you're eating, of course you're gonna be better off. The only difference between that and what we did is that we had a smaller grocery store. Our grocery store was McDonald's. John's a unique individual. He has a lot of different ideas. And when he came and asked if they could roll this out and, and experiment a little bit, we, we always want to encourage our teachers to think outside the box. You know, we decided to roll with it and it just kind of took off from there. I tell him he's an extremist because he doesn't do anything halfway. He goes all out for anything that matters to him and is important to him. And teaching students about life skills and um, things that they can use to um, empower them in making choices and decisions in their life. He's all over that. This was all generated by the kids. This was nothing more than an experiment of choice. And it taught kids to use critical thinking skills to make educated decisions about choice and what you can eat. That's the beauty behind this whole experiment. You see, this experiment wasn't about McDonald's. This experiment wasn't about me. This experiment was about teaching kids to use critical skills in making proper choices. We all know what happens when a human being with an average weight and size uncontrollably consumes exaggerated amounts of food at McDonald's or anywhere else with no real exercise, weight gain, depression, Sexual dysfunction makes sense. But what would happen if an overweight male in his 50s ate McDonald's for 90 days, all while controlling the number of calories he consumed, monitoring the nutritional values of each meal, and began incorporating 45 minutes of walking four to five days each week? Meet John Cisna, the 55-year-old science teacher from Iowa who was crazy enough to try it. Here's how it started. In September of 2013, Mr. Cisna chose three students to help him with an experiment. The question was simple. Is it possible for a person to become better off eating nothing but McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 90 straight days? This is the story of a man who ate 540 meals in a row at McDonald's and lived to talk about it. We were all sitting in class one day trying to decide like what project we were going to do and he said who wants to do something in the medical field. The three of us raised our hands and he said you guys come with me and he took us out in the hall. And so I knew I had three of the students that were going on to school in the medical field and I approached them and said I've got this idea would you like to use this as your semester project. The hypothesis was is it possible for a person to become better off eating nothing but McDonald's for breakfast, lunch and dinner for 90 straight days. I was a little confused at first, and then I went home that night and I was like, 
This is kind of weird, but I'm going to continue to go with it because I think it's pretty cool. We wanted to find out what the impression was with the students and the faculty of whether they thought this had uh, any kind of chance of being proven positive. I was outlining the details of it, of somebody going on a McDonald's diet and losing a great number of pounds. Like I suppose everyone else that have heard about the project kind of thought, eh, I'm not so sure that this was going to really work. I didn't think it would work at all. I thought like, oh, McDonald's was just all about the bad, nothing good, so I thought he'd just get worse than what he was. Super size me kind of, like, def I set my opinion, I suppose. I didn't eat McDonald's for quite a long time. John said he was going to lose weight and eat at McDonald's three times a day. And he said he was going to exercise. So with the exercise and cutting down the calories, I thought, okay, you're going to lose weight. But I was really skeptical about what he was going to feel like. It was a little concerning, you know. I uh, wasn't sure quite what he had in mind. He really hadn't spilled out all the details and how much he was going to kind of uh, rein in his class and talk to him about uh, what their options were and what they could uh, allow in a day. You know, I could see him having a, uh, a Big Mac and shake four times a day, you know, uh, as, as his only meal. Um, so as he laid it out and kind of talked about the, you know, the restrictions he put on him, I thought it was a great, a, a great idea. I encouraged him to um, talk with his school nurse in his building and um, let her know what he was doing to get her input that I thought she would probably be the one person that would understand what he was doing, who would understand nutrition and, and calories and exercise. We were doing flu shots. He came in for that and was talking to some people that come from the county level to do that, you know, nurses and stuff. He was talking about his McDonald's diet and I kind of chuckled and thought, sure. <laughs> Because, you know, we see the Super Size Me, all that stuff that we've seen on TV. So he talked about what he was doing, had the kids involved with it, kind of got talking about it. And then he'd come down after that and we started talking more on a daily or weekly basis about where he was at. He would send me his emails and stuff what he was doing with the kids. I knew, first of all, that I was going to lose weight. I had to. Because there were two parameters that we put the kids on. Number one, they had to keep me at 2,000 calories a day. And we also tracked... 15 different nutrients of any item that I ate. And what they had to do is they had to use a balancing act to make sure they stayed as close to 2,000 calories a day as they could, as well as the 15 nutrients of trying to keep those in line with what the standards have been set by the Food and Drug Administration. Well, we had this chart on our computer that we could all access, and we, two of us would go in every night. It was usually Savannah. She's good with that stuff and she'd go in and change everything for his meal for the next day and he'd look at it, print it off, and then go get that. The kids set the entire menus up. All I did is every Sunday I'd go online to see what they had selected for me and then I went off to McDonald's. We tried to eat as many things on the menu as we possibly could. You know, some of the skeptics of this had said, well, he just probably only ate salads. No, I had everything. I had Big Macs, I had the habanero, I had quarter pounders with cheese, I had ice cream cones, I had sundaes. And what's really amazing that people find unbelievable is probably 95% of every day, I had french fries. I love french fries and that was a great part of it. The key to this experiment was carefully planning my choices so that I met the calorie parameters each day that we had set. The day before we started, I got on and went to uh, McDonald's.com and they have a menu builder. And on that, you can select any item in their menu and up pops all the nutritional values of that. That saved the kids about 90% of the work. Because at first, I thought they were going to have to go in and do some investigation to figure out, okay, how much is actually in this product? How much is in this, how much is in this product? But McDonald's makes it very, very easy to make the choices simple to make. Here's an example of a meal that John built during his 90-day experiment. For breakfast, on day 75, he had two Egg White Delight McMuffin sandwiches, one fruit and maple oatmeal, and a large Diet Coke, totaling 790 calories, 40 grams of protein, 20 grams of total fat, 118 grams of total carbs, and 1,740 milligrams of sodium. For lunch that day, he ate a premium bacon ranch salad and a fruit and yogurt parfait. For dinner, a premium McWrap Southwest with grilled chicken, a small order of french fries, and a large Diet Coke. 
Using McDonald's Menu Builder, John and his students were able to keep complete track of nutritional information. Well, here we are, the first evening of the first of 90 days to come. The diet started today, had a great breakfast at McDonald's, nice lunch, and when I get done working out here, I'll go for the dinner. So, this is the first day. I'll be uh, walking 45 minutes. We'll be tracking that, see how long it happens. Nice, beautiful day out today. That's good because the rest of this week, it looks like it's going to be nothing but rain. So, anyhow, wish me luck. Off I go. We knew it was important to have a plan that included two things, proper diet and moderate exercise. So the moderate exercise, we decided for me to walk 45 minutes a day, four to five days a week, and that's what we did. The diet wasn't the problem. There's enough diversity in, in McDonald's menu, and the kids did a wonderful job of switching it around, but the real challenge of this project was the exercise. Not the physicalness of the exercise, but the mental aspect of it. You've got to remember that I was a junior high football coach as well during this time, so I had to do my exercise after football practice or after the games when everybody else had gone home to their families and I was walking around that track by myself for 45 minutes every night. Well, I tell you what, my mind says yes, my body says holy buckets Batman. Didn't quite make it the 45 minutes, <clears throat> made it 30 minutes, but uh, this is uh, kind of tough carrying this kind of weight around. I did make it a mile and a half though, so a mile and a half in 30 minutes. I have no doubt I'm going to have to warm up tomorrow morning just to get out of bed. But the good news is, one day down and only 89 more to go, and from here I get to go to McDonald's to have dinner. We'll go at it again tomorrow. The first day was an eye opener. You know, as an ex-athlete, and I was a fairly good athlete in high school and college, I thought 45 minutes of walking was going to be a piece of cake. And after that first day, when I got to about the 30th minute, I started, my legs started cramping up, and I couldn't make it. And I was psychologically defeated that day. Because here I was thinking, how tough would it be to walk 45 minutes, and I couldn't do it. And I was a little bit defeated at the end of that first day, thinking, what have I gotten myself into? And it took me probably four or five days before I could walk 45 minutes. I didn't realize how much 280 pounds meant of trying to do just simple exercise like that. I mean, that's the perception that everybody has about fast food and McDonald's. And that is what's so nice about this experiment is, I think this is experiment is starting to wake people up to the fact that there's nothing wrong with fast food. There's nothing wrong with McDonald's. You see, one of the kids said it eloquently after the words when we interviewed him. He said, you know what, this experiment shows us that it's not McDonald's that makes us fat. It's our choices of what we eat that makes us fat. And I think that just, that says it right there. What it really comes down to is that it's not where you eat, but it's what you eat and how much you eat that really makes the difference. During this experiment, we learned how important choices were for the outcome. My weight loss was the result of careful planning and choosing the food and drinks for my nutrition and physical activity needs and making sure that I had moderate exercise included. I would never recommend that anyone eat only McDonald's all day, every day for months, but my story demonstrates that through planning and mindful choices, you can still enjoy your favorite McDonald's items and meet your goals at the same time. You know, one of the problems I think the misconceptions people have about McDonald's and fast foods is they listen too much to the internet. They believe that whatever they see, whatever they read, whatever they hear on the internet is gospel. You know, Mark Twain once said that a person who doesn't read the newspaper is uninformed. The person who does read a newspaper is misinformed. And you know, if Mark Twain was alive today, I think he would just substitute the word newspaper to internet. I think the greatest impact it's had for all of us, including the students, is the fact of the importance of the choices that we make. I think that's kind of what intrigued me at first of all in the whole 
uh, idea behind this concept was the fact that let's help kids understand that they make choices each and every day and how do we help them make good choices. Uh, McDonald's is one of those brands that everyone recognizes throughout the world. It also is an opportunity that was so controversial with a Super Size Me that, uh, editorial or, if you will, documentary that happened years ago. So what it meant for us was the fact that we had the time to do it. 90 days isn't a long period of time. It was appropriate for the curriculum that we were trying to teach. It was going to give kids an opportunity to really look at the choices they were making and also give them an opportunity to really get their hands dirty with something that they were extremely interested in. So those were all positive things for both students, the staff, and our community. When I hear or read of people saying, this is impossible, he couldn't have lost this weighting of that, that's what gets me even more excited because I was a part of that experiment. I was the guinea pig. I was the person, and I know for a fact that yes, I ate 540 straight meals at McDonald's. I spent a half a year of my life eating nothing but McDonald's, and I know it works. So when I hear the skeptics, it doesn't disgruntle me. It actually fires me up because those are the people that I have to educate. People ask me this, well, you still eat McDonald's and do you still exercise? My answer to both of those is yes. And people say, how can you eat at McDonald's after you ate 540 straight meals? It's simple. I like McDonald's. I eat almost every day their breakfast. I love the egg white delight sandwiches and the, and the oatmeal. And I can virtually say I five or six days a week I eat that. Now I don't eat three meals every day, but I eat McDonald's every day because I enjoy it. You know, for the first time I tell people what this experiment has really shown me, for the first time in my life, I can enjoy any food that I want. If my wife and I go out and I want a piece of cheesecake, I'll have that piece of cheesecake because I'll plan the rest of the day accordingly so I can have it. It was kind of neat because at the halfway mark, both the teachers and the students started showing a very concerted effort of watching what was happening with the project. As it evolved, the town started getting involved with it. Because at first, when people were seeing me walking around the track in between football games, some of the parents would say to the kids, what's Cisna doing? I said, well, he's doing this silly experiment and he's exercising and eating McDonald's. Oh, I see. Well, as it kept going on, and now as the results started coming through, they knew that something big was here. My big thing, and John and I have talked about this a lot, I, I don't know that this project was about McDonald's. It's about choice. Um, it's about people choosing what they take in. They can choose to eat healthier, they can choose not to. It doesn't really matter where you go. Anywhere you go, you can look through a menu, pick out what you need and what's healthy, and be able to make your own choices about it. John ate McDonald's for 180 straight days. For the first three months, he made balanced meal choices and incorporated regular moderate exercise and lost a total of 37 pounds. His cholesterol went from 249 to 170. His triglycerides went from 156 to 80, and his LDLs went from 170 to 113. He continued his experiment for an additional three months, increasing the intensity of his exercise while continuing to make balanced meal choices from the McDonald's menu. He ended up losing a total of 60 pounds, and his blood pressure was 121 over 78. John continues to exercise regularly and make balanced meal choices wherever he eats.